Okay, everyone, it is past 4 a.m. I have nothing better to do, and I've decided that I'm going to make a new pair of Seder legs at some point. So I've decided to start with tutorial bits now. Um, I did promise one at one point, <laughs> and I would enjoy actually making a new pair. So I'm just going to bring out some of the sketch stuff that needs to be done in order to make said Seder legs. And you guys can't see that. <laughs> so, basically what I start with is a rough sketch of a basic leg form. Now, this all depends on, you know, how you're shaped as a person has nothing to do with who you are or what you do and blah blah blah. Just come as close to your shape as you think you can. See, this is probably as good as I'm going to get in a sketch. So, this. Here's your basic shape. Now, from here, it's actually quite simple to get from, from, you know, the human type leg style to an animal. Depending on what you're looking for, in this case, because I'm doing a satyr, I'm going to want more of a pointed ridge bone here and have this come in a bit, right here. This way, this gives the illusion that when I'm wearing a shoe, that shoe is gonna look like a hoof. Even though in reality, it's much longer. I'll have furrows coming from here to cover the shoe, giving it a nice, easy swoop here. This way I don't have to wear those heelless shoes and be standing on my toes all the time. I find that to be extremely uncomfortable as I've tried to do so using um, paws and paw socks and doing it without the heel. Yes, it creates a lot of strength in your feet and throughout them, but trust me, by the end of the day you're going to be feeling it once you get those shoes off. Or even walking around depending on what you're doing. If you're doing a Ren fair, <laughs> good luck to you. Now, here, I tend to do one of two things. I don't, I take a basic shape, just like this, triangle, keep it like that, right? Wrong. From here, I need to make it more bulbous and round and then try and smooth it out to give it more of that look that I'm looking for. Now this is where my knee is. The end there isn't going to affect my movement as much. But let me tell you now. Depending on how you move, it can be very uncomfortable. Which is why sometimes, when I go for this, let me just draw up a secondary here. Don't mind how nonchalantly I do this. I've been doing it too long, if you ask me. Because <laughs> when I did my first pair for a customer who asked me if I could make them... Okay, so this is essentially my kneecap right here. Because this person was so skinny and had very long legs, all I did was take this and come across here. 
and give her one, a bone here, that was a bit more wide. Coming down. And she wore chunkier shoes. Now, a lot of people ask, well, what about this knee piece? Simple. Because of how it comes off on the leg, you're going to want to cut that so this opens and closes when you move. Easy, right? Not quite. See, even with both of these patterns, you're going to want to cover it and smooth it out. Now, when you're cutting the foam, I recommend using a electric carving knife. It's a lot smoother, a lot easier to work with. It's not as hard. And quite frankly, it cuts as though butter through a knife. Just, yes. <laughs> I've been able to work with one. I had the distinct pleasure of doing so, and I enjoyed it. Now, when you attach either this piece or this piece, Cover it with quilt batting. That way you can get rid of any unfinished edges that you couldn't quite, you know, carve off. This will allow for the legs to look more uniform, not as lumpy. And then what you're going to want to do is cover it with a very smooth material, like a satin or cheap lining that you can get cheap at a store. You don't want to do that until after you attach it to the leg. Again, basic leggings will do. Um, you can get them anywhere. Walmarts, CVS sometimes, you know, Rite Aid, uh, Salvation Army, heck, even an old pair of pajama pants. Well, pajama jeans, rather, not pajama pants. It's, that was a poor statement on my part. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but that's really all you need to do. Now, with a lot of the stuff I end up working with, spray adhesive works. But you have to be careful. Now, if you can't afford to make a duct tape dummy because duct tape can be expensive sometimes and you just want to make these legs, that's fine. Put on your leggings and mark where you want to put your padding. Okay? Once you do that, take the padding, double check, you know, remark if you have to, and then layer newspaper over your legs so you don't get hurt or have anything get stuck. This will allow for you to spray the adhesive to both the legging and the thing, the foam, and then from there you let it sit for a couple of seconds before applying the two. Then hold it for two minutes. Check every once in a while. If it's not done, add another five or ten depending on how much you put on, where you put it on, and your body heat, it might take, the time varies between five and ten minutes. Um, be very careful. Don't get anything stuck to you, because, quite frankly, it sucks. I know, I had a patch of foam attached to my side for a week <laughs> when I was working on this stuff. Um, if you can afford it, I recommend the duct tape dummy. I really do. It will make your life so much easier. But if you can't, use the newspaper technique. Once all your foam is set, you're going to need to hot glue the batting and everything else. Or you can just spray adhesive that as well if you want to. That's up to you. Um, from there, what I like to do, wearing the padding in the legs, I lay down on the strip of fur I'm using at the given point in time and wrap it around one side of my leg and get, you know, a general 
idea of what needs to be done. So, say, from laying down on a flat side to the center of the leg, it's another four inches at a two inch inseam. So, when you're going to cut this pattern out, don't mind me as I make the dotted line of, of doom. Do 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 I'm doing this for your guys' benefit. Make sure that from this let me shift you guys. Add more. Maybe not that much more, but you get the basic idea. Guesstimate. And if you feel like your guesstimate's wrong, guesstimate again. It's always good to have extra. Because then you can say it's too baggy in here. You can always just take it in. You know? And, you know, say maybe that once you have your legs sewn together, that you don't want it to be all one color. That extra fur gives you a little bit of leeway because then you can cut little stripies into it, like this. You know, if I could actually draw straight at 4 a.m. <laughs> Easy, you could draw little check marks in your fur and cut them out and put different fur colors in, you know? And spice it up a little bit which is what I hope to plan to do with mine. I want to make mine black and charcoal. I probably spelled that wrong. I am sorry, YouTube. I am sorry. Now, this pattern is typically more or less what I would use for a wolf. Or, you know, a basic animal that isn't goat-like. It's not as bulbous. It's a lot leaner. I'm going to let go of the cord real quick because you shift. I need to get more comfortable. It's a leaner pattern. But it, it's generally the same thing when you're making the digi raid. There's not that much of a difference between procedure and... Yeah. I don't know where I was going with that. There's not that big a difference. If you're careful, and you know how to really work with your patterns, you can even integrate the two to your liking. You don't necessarily, if you're going to be a satyr, have to have one or the other. You can try and piece it together in a way that it suits you and the character that you're trying to portray, either out of a book or just an original character that you made up off the top of your mind. Satyrs tend to have, you know, either the little cute short tail thing going on you know like like that or they have